An intriguing prospect, but I don't see a path for him going forward. What's going on Blazer fans? Welcome back to another player review. I've dropped a bunch of videos in my series of daily uploads. Definitely go check out the channel page if you've missed any of them. If you've missed any player reviews, there will be a playlist link down in the description box below. With that being said, let's jump into the player review for Keon Johnson. Now, I obviously didn't do a player preview for him because he wasn't on the team. He came to the Portland Trail Blazers at the trade deadline in a trade for Norman Powell and Robert Covington. He came to Portland along with Justice Winslow who played and then Eric Bledsoe who didn't play. Keon Johnson was the prized acquisition in that trade although it was a bit questionable of a trade to say the very very least but Keon Johnson showed some flashes over the course of the season some of his upside he's still a very young prospect and we're gonna get into his player preview. Let's first start off with his stats this season when he was with the Clippers he barely played at all he played in 15 games at only nine minutes per game average three and a half points his shooting numbers were not good 35 percent from two and 27 percent from three he then got an opportunity when he got traded to portland as he played in 22 games started 12 of them and played over 25 minutes per game averaged almost 10 points per game almost three assists almost three rebounds and his three point percentage had an uptick to 35 percent not much of a sample size on his rookie season, only 37 games in which most of the minutes came with Portland. But there is enough to come away with a couple things in terms of Keon Johnson. The first positive for Keon Johnson was his three-point shooting. This was a dude who struggled to shoot the three ball in college, only shot 27%. And then with the Clippers, he was only shooting 27% as well. Got traded to Portland where he shot 35% from three with them on four attempts per game. So there was volume there. He shot a lot of threes. He got some confidence behind the three-point arc and it was good to see him knock down some shots. His form looks fine to me. I don't know why he struggled so far during his career and maybe it's just a fluke. I don't know. It was good to see him knock down some threes though in his 22 games in Portland. He shot 31 for 89 from the three-point arc in his stint with the Trailblazers and this is one of the biggest weaknesses he had coming into the league and he already is showing that he's able to knock down some threes. So that is definitely the biggest positive from Keon Johnson playing this year for the Portland Trailblazers. The second positive was his passing and he showed some flashes of playmaking throughout his tenure in Portland but he ended it off with a bang in his final four games with the Portland Trailblazers he had seven assists against OKC eight assists against New Orleans and then six assists against both Dallas and Utah in these games he played 30 to 35 minutes per game but nonetheless showing these playmaking flashes was very very impressive and during this four game stretch he had 27 assists and only 12 turnovers so he was taking care of the ball relative to his playmaking as well now he didn't shoot the ball well during this stretch but as somebody who has some questions as a long-term scoring threat being able to play some defense hopefully as well as pass the ball and handle the ball gives him a potential to carve out a niche in the league the third positive for him is his age he he still has a ton of time to figure things out he's barely 20 years old at the time of this recording and when he was brought into the league he was always looked at as a project player somebody who wasn't going to be ready right away but had a lot of long-term upside and he showed those flashes of upside and nobody should expect him to be anything close to a finished product yet overall with project players it's hard to sit and find positives in their rookie seasons usually unless they just completely break out and take everybody by surprise but in terms of shooting and passing the ball, Keon Johnson looked further ahead than I would have expected him to look his rookie season. Now let's look at the negatives. What's funny is a lot of these negatives are things that were looked at as immediate strengths for him or at least some of his best positive attributes heading into the league. The first one is his finishing. He was looked at as a great finisher coming out of Tennessee, but this year Keon Johnson really struggled to finish the ball. He shot under 50% within 0 to 3 feet, which is not good whatsoever. He shot 36% from 2 on the season, which is very very bad. He almost shot a higher percentage from 3 than he did from 
2, which I would have never expected that to be the case. He was somebody coming into the league with his athleticism was looked at to be a good finisher, and he really struggled in that regard. That is my first negative for him. The second negative was his mid-range shot. He did not knock down mid-range shots whatsoever this year he took 32 percent of his shots from three feet to the three-point line from three to ten feet he shot 35 percent from 10 to 16 feet he shot 21 percent and he did not make a shot from 16 feet to the three-point arc on the entire season so he really struggled with his mid-range shot it doesn't look bad and he took a decent amount of them almost a third of his shots came from three feet to the three-point line like i said he just didn't knock him down so i don't know if this is something that he should be shooting so early in his career i think he should be a guy that either shoots threes or just tries to get all the way to the rim with his athleticism because this season the mid-range did not work out whatsoever for him the third negative was his defense and i don't think he was necessarily a bad defensive player but that was his biggest strength heading into the league was he was a guy that could be seen as a lockdown defender and he showed some flashes of that but i didn't see enough of it to not list this as a negative for a player with his defensive reputation coming into the league. Now, I know that rookies tend to struggle on the defensive end, even if they're touted as lockdown guys coming into the league. It takes some time to adjust to the speed of the game, to some of the better players that you have to play against, and he did have to start, but he played a lot of minutes against an easy schedule, which Portland had down the stretch, and there was just times where he didn't impress me defensively. He can get up into the Ball and get steals and whatnot but I think just his size and lack of strength really holds him back a little bit I think he needs to get into the weight room get a little bit stronger so he can bang with guys a little bit more on drives and I think he will end up becoming a good defender he's just not there yet and I was a little bit disappointed giving his reputation coming into Portland and then the fourth negative for him is the situation in Portland. I don't see a pathway for him getting developmental minutes here in Portland. I think Portland has a three guard lineup next year that is going to play all the guard minutes. And that is, of course, Damian Lillard, Anthony Simons, and Josh Hart. I don't see Keon Johnson being able to play the three. He's very undersized for that position. He's honestly undersized for the two guard position. I think he's a combo guard at best, and he might be able to play more point guard than we thought because of his uh, passing flashes he showed at the end of the year. He played a lot of point at the end of the year and handled it pretty well. But either way, Portland just doesn't have guard minutes next season, and I don't think they'll have guard minutes the season after. It's just hard to get him the minutes that he needs to develop, and I don't see a pathway to him being able to develop in Portland. So his situation here isn't necessarily the best for him. It was good for him this year because he got a lot of minutes to develop, but over the next couple seasons, I don't think it's going to be a positive for him at all. That is, however, assuming that he stays in Portland. And when we look ahead, bold proclamation, I expect him to be a Detroit Piston next year. According to Eric, it sounds like Jeremy Grant to the Blazers is a done deal, and I fully expect that package to be something like the 2025 Milwaukee first and Keon Johnson for Jeremy Grant, who fits into the TPE. Keon Johnson would make a lot of sense in Detroit. Cade Cunningham's a big point guard. That means Keon Johnson can play off the ball offensively, but then defensively, he can be their point guard-sized player, and then Cade Cunningham can guard wings. They obviously are having a youth movement there in Detroit. I think Cade Cunningham in an up tempo offense makes the most sense i think keon johnson fits into that he's obviously a lob target with his insane athleticism even though he's only six foot three and playing in detroit next year would be a great situation for keon johnson and i wouldn't be too upset if they had to give him up for jeremy grant even though i don't really want jeremy grant simply because it'd just be a much better situation for him if he doesn't get traded though fully expect him to play in summer league and he could be a guy that tears up summer league he could be a really fun summer league player to watch especially playing off a guy like trenton watford you'll probably have greg brown there as well and then whoever Portland uses their pick on, that should be a really good summer league team. And Keon Johnson could have some very exciting, flashy moments in summer league. So I would definitely look forward to watching him on our summer league team if we keep him. In terms of his contract, he has one to three years left on it. Next year, he is for sure under contract. And then the third year is a team option. And then the fourth year is a team option. That's how rookie contracts work for players that are drafted in the first round. I fully expect whatever team has him to pick up his contract options, even if he doesn't look too good his first couple years because as I said he's obviously a project obviously a long-term developmental piece as far as Keon Johnson's grade for this season I grade him a C 
there was some things that I were expecting to be negatives that were positives, and there was things that I were, was expecting to be positives that ended up being negative, so it's kind of hard to grade him overall, so I'm just going to split right down the middle and give him a C. Anyway, that wraps up this player review. Hopefully you enjoyed. I will have another one coming up tomorrow, so hopefully you're able to catch that one as well. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a like on this video. It really does help me out, and I'm out of here. Until next time, as always, peace out. Go Blazers!